Hi, I'm Nazar Rashid. I'm Jared. And in this segment of PCTV, we're going to revisit connecting a smart TV to your wireless internet. Now, why are we doing that, Jared? Well, basically because we had such a huge response on the first video. And uh, it wasn't particularly detailed. It was, um, it was one particular TV. It was my TV. And it was um, a Panasonic one. So we thought we'd look at a different brand of a TV, run through it again, because we just got a, a huge amount of questions on that. Yep, this one is going to be a Samsung Smart LED 48-inch Smart TV with 3D and all sorts of bells and whistles and everything else. But connecting up to your wireless internet isn't that much dissimilar to what we did before. So we're going to show you how we do that. And yeah. we'll show you that right now. Okay. Okay. So first of all, you go into your, with your little remote control, you go into your menu settings over there. And I will go down to network, just like that. And you see it says network status. We're not connected at the moment. We disconnected specifically for this. So I go into my network settings, which gives you an outline of the availability of networks around you. Okay, so as you can see, it's got a few options for us to choose from. The cloud, the cloud 5G, and triple S app. We want to go down to triple S app because that's my local. And it's a, um, it's a Wi-Fi which is protected using WPA. Joe, what does WPA stand for? Uh, Wi-Fi protected access. That's right, and it's just a, uh, a format that they use in order to encrypt you know, your Wi-Fi so that no one can piggyback on it for free. That's right. You have to type in a password, access code if you will. So I would do that right now. You don't need to see what I'm going to do. Now it's worth noting here that all of this only works if you have correctly set up your Wi-Fi on your home router. But if you've connected any device to it, like your laptop or anything like that when you probably bought the service it was set up for you, then this should work fine. But um, yeah, just one caveat that obviously you have to set up the passwords and the SSID. That's right. So now I've entered my passwords, uh, which I hope will blank out because we don't want everyone in the world to see what my password was. You hit done, and then it will show you that it's checking the wireless connection right now, and we are connected. Oh, great. And it's really that simple. So mm. it's not a difficult thing to do. So now I go down to OK. And what that means now is I can get out of my menu and if I want to hit my smart hub, okay, I can go in there and um, I all of a sudden have these options that I can check. There are all the channels. The cool options are here. These are your Wi-Fi connected stuff. This is all your little apps that will take you online. So if I wanted to, I could go to, let's say to begin with, um, all right, SBS On Demand. So if I went to SBS On Demand and then straight away, SBS On Demand pops up and you can go in there, that's your home page and then you go into movies if you want or you can go into comedy which we will do right now just to show you something and I'll show you my very favourite my very favourite show on SBS 2 at the moment as soon as it pops up, there we go uh, which is a couple of, so you can go through every single with SBS On Demand obviously everything, all of their shows that they've got on um, the channel is available for you. I'm going to go down to community. Yeah. And bear in mind again, this is only one service. Yes. This is just SBS On Demand. That previous page had all the various services that you can see. Get. And um, now I can watch my favorite shows, which in this case it happens to be community because I like that particular comedy show. Yeah, me too. So that's very, very simple. Very, very easy. And that's how to connect up your Wi-Fi to your smart TV. And um, if you want to access all of the um, applications that your television has, your smart TV, then you need to have Wi-Fi connected up to it so that you can do everything you want it to do. So going back to my smart hub now, I'll show you exactly where we are back there. Once again, as a matter of fact, this particular TV comes with an e-manual, which allows you to, if you have any sort of problems or issues with your TV and you want to see what, how to do it, it shows you there's a quick guide right there. Oh look. It tells you how to do every single thing. So if I was if I didn't have the knowledge of doing what I just did, I can simply click internet connection there and um, 
There you go, establishing a wired connection, establishing a wireless connection. If we connect, click to that, it will give you straight away a graphical visual interface showing you exactly what we just told you how to do. Oh, that's good. So a lot of your TVs nowadays will have that. As you can see, it's going through the same exact steps that we just went through. Shows you how to connect up to it. And off you go. This is a lot more detailed because um, they have to obviously try to account for every type of instance. And so they've gotten every type of, of, of connection possibility here. This is all the manual stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, something else we might want to mention because we did get questions about it is the wireless dongle. Yeah. So on my TV, it was uh, a separate device that plugged into a USB on the back of the TV. Was yep. this one? This it, one's got it internal. It's just built in. Yeah, Wi-Fi okay. built in. So that's a feature that you need to have. If you don't have Wi-Fi built into your television, you'll need to have, like Jared just said, a wireless dongle, which will click, connect up to a USB in the back of your television and give you exactly the same feature mm. set. Though I, I reckon probably most TVs now yeah. You don't worry about that anymore? No, no. It's just something that they're standard putting into the TVs from the factory. So for us, that's fantastic. It makes it so much easier. For you, it means that you don't have to go and buy you know, third-party products to have to plug in. It's, it gets a little bit tedious and a bit sort of um, difficult. This is much, much simpler. Okay. So there you go. Great. Okay, so what we did last segment was we showed you how to connect up your smart TV to your wireless internet. Uh, to your wireless network using uh, the smart TV's capabilities. And now we want to show you how to connect up a smartphone to your, through your wireless internet so they can play videos, let's say, that you've recorded on your phone onto your TV. So the way that we do this, is obviously, is um, first of all, we need to make sure that your Wi-Fi connection is on. So I'm going to click this button here, which will make sure the Wi-Fi connection goes on. And you'll see in the top bar in a second a little Wi-Fi. There you go, that little wireless um, icon pops in that means that we're connected so now I go into my gallery and I will choose a video for us to play let's say um, well let's say this one here which is I think kiss so we'll play that now what I want to do is start playing immediately and as you can see down the bottom it says select player so I'll select player and it will start looking for different players that are available. And as you can see, it says Samsung TV. Now this uses DLNA to connect up. So I hit that one there, I hit done. And now when you look at the TV, and there you go, as you can see, this is a concert, a KISS concert actually, that we went to. And um, it starts playing immediately over your television. Okay, so now we've had a viewer question about how to connect up two monitors at the same time simultaneously. So what we're gonna show you is how to do that. Now, first of all, you need to have a graphics card that has uh, connections for two monitors. Mine does, luckily. And as you can see, this little part here, this is a second DVI connection. Now what I've got here is I've got a VGA DVI um, converter because I didn't have a second VGA connector. So what this does is just connects me straight into the very back of that. So what I'll do is I'll plug that in just the way it's meant to be, which I do like that. And we put this in here, just like that. And it goes in, as you can see, it plugs in fine. So I've got one connection here for one monitor. And then this blue one is the second connection for the second monitor. So now, we'll move this back a bit. We can turn on that second monitor. Okay, so Nazar's plugged in the second monitor. We had to reboot the computer to activate the second port. Right. Sometimes, uh, some cards will support just a, a cable splitter yeah. uh, for two monitors. If it's a, a DVI, I think can do that. Yep. So it can just use the one port, a lot of them have two. But as you can see, now we have two monitors and by default, they've come up in what's called an extended desktop. So if we make a window here, uh, you can see that we can drag this window around. From one monitor to the other. That's right. So it's, it's treating it like uh, one big screen. But you can see this large monitor has a much better resolution than this one. So it's automatically sort of changing it. Yeah. As you can see there. But anyway, to change these settings, we right click on the desktop and we go to screen resolution. And you'll see this. 
So it's showing us we've got a big monitor and a little one. Uh, you can hit uh, identify here and you'll see it'll create a big one and a big two. So here's our two monitors. Yep. And we can change uh, the way these work. So multiple displays, what we've done is extended these displays so it acts like uh, you know one big one. We could duplicate them. So now we just have a mirrored thing. What's that? Oh, there's a monitor driver for your monitor. Yeah. Okay. So it's messed with the resolutions a little bit. This is usually not what you do, but you can, you can do it. And uh, then we can uh, change where we see our desktop. So like our taskbar and bottom items. But usually it's duplication. So we'll go back to that. And it's messed with our resolution a little bit. You want to find the recommended for uh, for what you want, and uh, that's pretty much how it works. That's it. Two monitors. So you do need the DVI cable or VGA cable with a splitter. Yeah, that's right. So you can get DVI, older one VGA, real new one Display Port, and HDMI. and HDMI is the common standard now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we hope that that help answers the question from our viewer about how to connect up two monitors. It's not that complicated. No. Any questions, let us know. Please. Okay, so what we're going to do right now on PC TV is show you how to connect up your smart TV to your PC but using a cable. Now, this is a HDMI cable and that's what connects into the back of my TV. Unfortunately, my computer doesn't have a HDMI connection, but fortunately for me, I've got a HDMI DVI converter. So what I need to do is take my HDMI DVI converter, plug in my HDMI like this, just like that. And now I can plug that into the back of my computer's graphics card and off we go. Right, now I'll plug this in here. Okay, so now what we've done is we've connected up my smart TV to my PC using a HDMI cable. And um, now from my TV, I can hit source. And what pops up there is you see it says HDMI 4 DVI. Now that's what I've got connected to my computer. So I hit that. And as you can see, it's showing me the screen on my computer now. Yeah, so this is behaving just like an extended display. Uh, like we had before. So, you know, we can move things across. Cool. And uh, we can set it up in the same way uh, that we did before as, uh, with the external monitor because as far as the computer is concerned, this is just an extended monitor. So if we hit the identifier, we can see number one and number two. So it's actually deferred to the TV as being the primary display, I suppose, because it's larger. Yeah. And, uh, so if I wanted to play something from my computer onto the TV? Then we just find it. So know, let's open up Internet Explorer here. That's Internet Explorer, not Windows Explorer. Yeah, I was going to go to YouTube or something. All oh, right, yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah, do it. No, no, do it. Okay. So, so again, just like the other monitor, it shows um, the two screens. And we can open up something like um, YouTube here. And we'll drag it over here. That's it. There we go. Play Here something. We and I don't know, George W. Bush. <laughs> Praises the torturers. <laughs> Let's look at this. One guy who might be living up to so his So shank uh, from Young Turks. Is George W. Bush, and he had a... Uh, so there you go. You tune to your TV from your computer. Perfect. So now, today we're just going to show you how to set up a home group on your private network at your house so that you can share documents, files, pictures, videos across multiple devices. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, we found that people will still take a USB drive or something like that and manually copy it and then take it out and put it in a computer that's right next to it. As long as you're on a, um, a LAN or a wireless LAN, you can enable this and you can share the files directly. Yeah. And you, so you do away with having to go through the 
horrible, tedious process of putting it onto a USB and sticking it from one computer to another when if you're on the same network, you don't need to do that. Okay, so how do we set up a home group? All right, so I've opened up a page of the internet of Windows Explorer here mm -hmm. uh, to show you everything that's in my computer. And as you can see, it's got an icon down the side called Home Group. So I'm going to click on that. Oh, yeah. And it says straight away, share with home computers running Windows 7. Now, these computers obviously are running Windows 7, which is a caveat for this. And then it says right here, create a home group. So I'm going to click on create a home group. It'll ask me what I want to share, and I want to share pictures, music, videos, documents, printers, whatever it may be. And I go, yes, so we'll go next. And it wants me to have this massive password, but we're going to change that password and make it into something much, much easier. I'm going to call it Home Group, capital Home. No, no, no. You, you need to set that and then change it afterwards. Oh, really? Yes. So just hit finish? So hit finish. Yeah. And then you can go view home group settings. Yep. All right, and you can change, change the, password. the password. Sure. All right, so let's change the password. And the ch password, which is that, I'm going to change that to home group. One, two, three, four. Okay. Like so, that. yeah, that um, alphanumeric string that it created before is strong. It'll randomly do that when you create a new one, but you can do this to set it to whatever you like. Yep. Home group, one, two, three, four. And now I hit finish, just like that. Yep. Cool, that's what it says it can share. I should have actually put uh, documents as well in case I want to share some documents. So we'll do that. And you can save changes. Save those changes. There we go. Okay. So let's say that I wasn't here yep. and uh, I rocked up with my laptop um, and you want to give me the password. Yep. So you would hit on your screen that view the home group password. Yep. Just like that. And that'll show you. you and then I have a look. And so moving over to my screen, I would also go to home group and you can see that I can join one. So it's realized that there's a home group on this local network yep. created by Nazar. Yep. And I can hit join. And again, the defaults there, it tends to pick everything except documents. Yeah. Strangely. So we'll pick documents because I think you did. Yep. Okay. And I go next and then I've got to type in the password. Which is home group one, two, three, four with a capital That's H. That's right. And you can see that it's telling me that this is the password from your user account Nazar on your laptop, which is called Black Labby. Yep. Okay. And so I'll go home group one, two, three, four. It'll have a little think. And then I'm joined. Yep. So, now we should be able to expand, uh, we, well, we can look on the network and see resources that are being shared. Once it has a bit of a thing. And we'll do it from this side too. So if I go back to here. Yeah, home group. I can see Optimus PC is already there. As you can see, Optimus is the name of your computer. It's under my home group settings. Mm -hmm. So now if I click on that, it'll show me your documents and libraries and things. That's right. That's right. So do you want to maybe uh, grab a file and copy it to your local machine? Sure. So they're all of the folders that are inside Black Lappy over there. Uh, no, from Black Lappy, they're inside Optimus, which is that great big computer right there next to me. That's right. And um, I can grab anything I want from there. They're all open for me to do that. So that's good. That's really good. So I will grab birthday wish if I want. So if I go like this and I decide to copy that, I can now copy it to wherever I want to copy it to. So I'll hit copy and I'll put that into my documents over here and just go paste. And as you can see, birthday wish just got moved over. Mm. And it's very fast because it's on the local network. Yep. Yeah. And it might be worth adding as well that this is pretty much the same steps in Windows 8. Yeah. Uh, as well. It's just maybe looks a little different because of the interface. Sure. So that's how you quickly and easily uh, set up a work group. Yep. Or a home, home group. group. Now. It used to be called a work group. Yep. And it, it's also worth noting you can do this over uh, 3G or 4G hotspots yep. as well. So if you have one of those that you use to get your uh, computer on the network, you can do the same thing while it's got an address from from that service you can uh, you can share across it excellent mm. 
Okay, so a couple more viewer questions. What was the first one we had? First one was how to unlock the icon. So instead of having them in a grid like that, if you wanted to move them all around the desktop. So yeah, these are locked and I can't move them around. They just snap back. So all you have to do is right click on the desktop and yep. go to view. Yep. And you'll see these two options here, auto arrange. And align and, into grid. Yeah, that's right. So as long as those are ticked, um, you won't be able to change anything. And I believe auto arrange by default does it in uh, alphabetical order. Right. So we'll take off auto arrange and then we'll take off align to grid and then we can simply move things around wherever we want and that's much better and it gives you a little bit more um, personalization that you'd want sure if you wanted to go back then just go back into view and uh, auto arrange and it moves them back for you yep okay so Done. that's how that goes and the other question was around search providers. Yeah, so in your Internet Explorer, once you go into your browser, perhaps you don't want to use Google or Bing or whatever it may be, and you want to choose something else. Mm, that's right. So I think Internet Explorer will pick Bing by default. Yep. Most people change it to Google. Uh, we'll show you how to do that. So we've opened up an Internet Explorer page here. We go to add-ons. Manage add-ons. Man manage add-ons here. Yep. And, uh, search providers. Yeah. And you can see we've got a few here and Google is listed as the default. Yep. Uh, you know, you can already see it. If we went to Bing here, we could hit here, set as default, and then that would be, that would work. So now browsers, you can just type a search term into the URL bar and uh, it'll use the search provider. However, uh, there's a search engine that we like called DuckDuckGo. Yeah. This one here. Which is uh, different in that it, it doesn't track you. That's right. It doesn't. It doesn't do any analytics. It just basically gives you search results and doesn't log your IP or. So a little bit of anonymity if mm. we want while yes. we're searching. That's right. So as you can see, it says search using IE, which is Internet Explorer, and if you hit that, then um, when you go into Internet Explorer, it will go to DuckDuckGo. That's right. It installs the extension. So if we hit that now, use that for IE. Uh, you'll see yes. Do you want to add this search provider? We do. Uh, you can even make it a default here, but we won't. We won't. So we'll just say add. Yep. So now if we go into settings. Yep. And back manage to manage add-ons. Add-ons and search providers. There it is. We now have DuckDuckGo. We can set that as a default and then any automatic searching and so forth that Internet Explorer does will go to that. Perfect. Mm. Yep. Some more viewer questions. Once again, if you've got any other queries or questions that you want us to answer, then please go to our YouTube page or our Facebook page and leave us your inquiry. Yeah, that's right. Thanks a lot. Okay. So that brings us to the end of another season of PCTV. Mm. And we hope that you've enjoyed watching it at least as much as we've enjoyed presenting it to you. Uh, that's the end of season two. Season three will be coming soon. And once again, if you have any questions or queries about anything you've seen on the program. Or any ideas, any things you'd uh, like us to do. That's right. We're always willing to take any ideas or suggestions from the viewing audience because after all, we're here to serve you. So please send us in anything you want us to cover that we might have missed that we that specifically you want to look at. And um, I think there's going to be a blooper reel to be played right after this, which is always embarrassing for us, but it's fun for you. So please enjoy that. And thank you so much for another season of PC TV. And we'll see you very soon for season three. Thanks a lot. Later. Very so diverse. A very diverse range. That's really cool. Mm. And so they're what, doing little podcasts, I guess. Rampus, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what you doing there? And the cat. Maybe you should have the cat on the show. Might yeah. as well. Just incorporate her. Yeah, yeah I don't think so. <laughs> You're not meant to be on the show. I have some friends who do remixes of things. So this is established artists as well as amateurs, complete amateurs, right? Definitely, yes. Cut. <laughs> the cat. He jumped up here, rattled everything, then he jumped on you, then he jumped, he jumped back up here again and rattled the whole camera. Alright, so we'll go from, we'll go from, so, so first of all, what we do is, um, let's open up a, a notepad. If you can find a notepad. <laughs> notepad. Ah, oh, start again. <laughs> Alright. I'll start again with, uh, so let's hey, open yeah. Am I going to talk? Yeah. Ah, oh. <laughs> yeah, of course. Is Fraps still on? Yeah, Fraps is on. Okay. You ready? 
So I'll start with, let's open up Notepad, and then you open it up. <laughs> Sorry. I say, Jared, open up Notepad, how's that? Uh, Episode <laughs> of PCTV. <laughs> right, I don't know my name. I didn't know if it was relevant. <laughs> Alright, cool. <laughs> Welcome back. On today's segment of what is it and why you should care, we're going to look at something called... What's that? What? You said why? Say what again. is this? Oh yeah, sorry. Let's start again, ready? Go. Three seconds after the clap. One, two, three. Okay. So as you can see, lots and lots that we've covered. And so uh, get ready and get prepared and keep watching this space because season two is coming to see you. Okay. <laughs> you want to do that yeah, again? Yeah, I want to do that again. All right, keep rolling.